Hi, welcome to my top 10 wedding photography tips. Um, I'll try not to let it turn into 10,000. Might get carried away here. Um, I've always had a little bit of a love-hate relationship with wedding photography um, and I have been sort of trying to move away from it the last few years but I just keep getting um, asked to do one more wedding and one more wedding. Um, it's a great feeling isn't it? Driving away from a wedding, having done a great job but the nerves beforehand and the pressure on the day it's exhausting isn't it so um, I hope these tips help you to make it run a little bit more smoothly number one is get confident with the manual setting on your camera so I've always shot weddings completely on manual and I remember doing a wedding with somebody once who shot the whole wedding on aperture priority and I used to think that's crazy because if you're outside and you know you've chosen the aperture that you want and the camera is setting the shutter speed for you then surely if you go into a slightly darker area you could end up with a shutter speed too slow for the movement that's going on around you and you might end up with blur so I used to be a bit of a control freak really and I always used to shoot everything on manual um, so the way I do that is I would pick um, obviously my ISO and the shutter speed according to the lens that I was using. So if I was using my 300mm lens, a rough guide is to pick a shutter speed above the 300 on the lens, so 300th of a second or over to hold that lens steady. Um, so I would pick a shutter speed safe for the movement of the people and the lens I was using and then I would work around that with my aperture and my ISO. Um, but actually these days I have been using um, shutter priority a little bit more just because when you're moving in and out of um, different light situations it's handy to have the camera doing some of it for you sometimes. So what you could do is you could have one camera set up on manual and the other one set up to perhaps shutter or aperture priority, but just be aware that if you're on aperture priority and you go to a slightly darker area, watch that your shutter speed doesn't drop too slow. Um, so yeah, get really confident with manual settings. I absolutely recommend that as number one. Number two, if you can afford it, invest in a prime lens, um, a portrait lens, I call it. So I did absolutely loads of research on this back in the day when I bought this one um, and because I wanted something that was going to give me that beautiful, smooth, shallow depth of field. And I did a lot of comparison between Sigma and Nikon. Um, at the time usually I just buy what feels right and don't really do massive amount of research if I'm honest but I did with this and I haven't looked back I got a Sigma 85mm 1.4 um, lens it was £500 second hand absolutely stunning lens as soon as I put this on my camera I just love photography to another level so definitely definitely or weddings it's worth investing in a good piece of glass this is going to let loads of light in and it just gives stunning results um, I will talk a little bit more about this lens and share some pictures that were taken on it uh, with it later on down the line so if you want to have a look at that then that'll be handy for you if you're thinking of getting one so number three have a backup camera just as peace of mind even if you borrow one so um, I mean, I, I, I went through a stage of borrowing one just because I only had my Nikon D3 at the time. So I would just borrow another camera um, off my sister-in-law. And it, even if, I mean, she had a DSLR, but even if you just take something, it doesn't have to be amazing. It's just something that you're familiar with. You know your way around that is just a backup if something goes wrong with your camera. Um, and actually the last wedding I did I took my little compact camera I had two cameras anyway um, for that one but I took a compact camera and I videoed the whole day as well as taking the pictures so I just had my compact camera that I use for YouTubing 
on a tripod and I just dragged it around everywhere with me and videoed everything. And then of course, you've not only given them a, the bonus of a video as well, um, but you've also got that to take stills off of. So it's another great backup, really. Um, personally, I don't ever charge for the vid if I do any videos, it's just purely as a backup. So just another little tip. Um, number four, plan. So plan the shots you're going to take. What I always used to do is I would go to the venue the week before the wedding or two weeks before the wedding when I knew roughly, that, you know, don't go six months before because the light will be completely different. So if you go a week or two before, at the time that you know they're getting married. So if say they're getting married at one o'clock, you know that by about half one, you're gonna be outside doing group shots. Go there at half one the week before and just have a look at the light, where it's laying, maybe take somebody with you, stand them in different areas, see where the light falls on their face, see where the shadows are, and find your good spots that you know are gonna be good light for groups and just shots of just the bride and groom as well. So if you do a little bit of planning, it's really good because you feel prepared for it. Just looking at my list, hang on. Um, ah, yes, adopt help on the day. This is this is something that I think is really important. If you've got a big wedding with a lot of people, grab one of the ushers before the wedding even starts and say, look, mate, can you give me a hand later? I don't know the names of people. Can you just go around grabbing people for me, getting the groups together. And if you get a good team on the day, it can help it run so much more smoothly. So make friends with people. Just go up, talk to the best man, the ushers, whoever's there, and just just have a chat with them. And um, yeah, ask them for help, with, especially with gathering people together. Uh, number six is find a balance between being assertive and pushy. So this, this is always the one that I've found the trickiest because as a wedding photographer, you need to get the job done. People don't want to be hanging around, waiting for the photos, watching a photographer that is dithering around, not really knowing what they're doing or looking a bit lost or just not having a confidence about them. But if you go too far the other way, you won't get people on side. If you're too bossy and people are trying to enjoy the day and they're having a drink and you're saying, get over here and, you know, being too full on, then that will go against you when you're trying to make them laugh because they won't laugh. <laughs> so this is a real tricky balance to find. Um, and I always find if you make friends with people when you get there and just get talking um, and yeah, just also when you come to making people laugh, I always find, because again, you know, you're in the middle of a wedding, it's a stressful, high pressure job and you've got all your settings to think about, where the light is, who's who's where, have you got the list right? There's so much going on in your mind at a wedding. And then you've got to try and loosen up to get people to smile, to sort of like make them laugh and crack a joke. And at times you're just, well, it's just tricky. So I always think laughing at yourself is quite a good one because I've seen a lot of wedding photographers sort of like taking the mick out of guests and things to try and get a laugh, but that really can backfire. So personally, I've always just gone with um, laughing at myself, you know, when you nearly fall over because you're walking back to get a shot and you trip over something, you know, or tell a funny story or just, I think, just try and be nice. Um, that's just my take on that one, though. So number seven, enjoy... Le oh yeah enjoy leading the bride and groom through the day okay. yeah so this is about going the extra mile so i um always found once i knew the drill of the day because i've done sort of like once you've done 50 weddings you kind of know what's coming and you might have a bride and groom that are quite nervous because they haven't done it before so you can really lead them through the day and help them with their nerves and kind of become almost part of the family you know and i i love 
sort of helping to fluff the dress and make things perfect and just have that eye for detail for them things they might not have seen you know the bride might have a little bit of hair out of place or or the makeup's gone a bit awry or something and it's really nice to just go that extra mile and look after them on the day not just you're not just a wedding photographer you're a massive part of that day running smoothly because you'll find that everyone will be looking at you for what to do next where do they go where do they stand what's the what's how does the day go if there's not a wedding planner there it's you that's not like leading the day so just be prepared for that and um enjoy it enjoy having that experience and sharing it to help their day run perfectly um yeah i remember one of the last weddings i did just sitting in the bride's room with her while she was having her makeup done she was sort of saying claire what do you think about this on or off or should i have my hair like this or this and i just love being part of that you know like just throw yourself into the day with them and when you do that it helps to ease the nerves i think so um number eight have a period of time with the bride and groom yeah i've always done this like a period of time with the bride and groom after all the chaos you've done the you've done the ceremony you've done the group shots outside you want a period of time with the bride and groom just them on their own before they sit down for the meal preferably um where you can really take your time to set up some nice shots and look at the light and just capture their day and help them to like relax and you relax into it maybe they take their champagne with them around maybe there's a nice garden you can stand them against a tree and put them in some nice poses but just make sure you have some nice time with the bride and groom on their own to just really take your time because i personally always find with wedding photography you just feel so rushed that you feel like sometimes there's not you don't feel like you've given each shot the time it deserves but you don't want to leave people waiting around so if you say to the guests you guys go and get a drink now i'm just going to take the bride and groom and i'm going to do some shots around just us two and then kind of like you know after that that once those shots are done you've probably only got the cake and maybe the dance later on and then you can just spend your time taking candid pictures natural ones just of people enjoying the day from a distance so yeah definitely make that time and take some pictures for you oh we've gone into number nine candid shots enjoy creating works of art and take some pictures for you yeah so get into your creative flow and take some pictures for you don't you know come away from that list you've had the list from the bride and groom and you've taken all of those the pictures that they want but then as a photographer you must enjoy some of it too and just i don't know just get into your own little world and just enjoy shooting little bits of detail on the tables and yeah take some pictures for you uh number 10 is take someone with you this is such a just for moral support more than anything i mean i started out taking my brother with me and then i went through a period of um of students coming with me photography students that were really keen for work experience so um i sort of took lots of different students with me as well took my mum to one of the last weddings I did and it is such a such a support to have somebody there keeping an eye on your kit obviously if they're a photographer as well and and you've got it okayed with the bride and groom they're taking their own pictures that's brilliant because then you've got you know you've got backup pictures if anything goes wrong too um yeah so take someone with you and um a, a little bonus tip Number 11. You must have all seen these reflectors. So they're great for in the studio. Um, if you want to give somebody a bit of a tan, a bit of a golden glow, you can use this for your studio lighting to bounce some light back in. You've got a black side there, really, really handy. A silver side, which will give you a nice contrasty light. So this is a reflector you use in the studio mainly to reflect light back into your subject. Um, but it is, and look what it, look what it's doing to my face. Look, it's like golden, just light 
What a difference. Oh, I love it. Amazing. But if you take it off until you've just got the, um, if you take the cover off, so you've just got the diffuser. Oh, this is amazing. If you're doing summer weddings and the sun is really bright and you know you stand, there's nowhere you can get, is there? If you've got a summer wedding and the, the sun is really high in the sky, you get that horrible, bright, garish, flat light and it's a nightmare and the wedding dress is like bleached and you've got shadows on the face oh if you've got one of these um bear in mind you probably need quite a, a big one but if you can get somebody to hold it above the bride and groom like that obviously without the bit in the back you can you can literally diffuse the sunlight with that so it takes away all the shadows in the face and um, I remember I did this one wedding once and the light was an absolute nightmare. And I found this pagoda because it was so, so bright. I found this pagoda in the garden and I just put this, I literally um, put it on top of this like archway. And I just stood every single couple that wanted photos under this thing and the light was absolutely perfect. So yeah, that's um, a good one as well. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy wedding photography and um, yeah, enjoy being a massive part of the day because it is such an important role. So have fun. Thank you. Bye.